Hello, and welcome to this lecture on sinusoidal sources. We're going to talk about what it means for a voltage or a current source to be sinusoidal and how to calculate a few important characteristics, such as maximum amplitude, um, phase angle. We'll talk about the difference between angular frequency and frequency or radians and degrees. And finally, we'll calculate the RMS value of a voltage or current source, um, which is really important for doing power calculations that we'll see down the road. So let's just get right into it. So let's start things off by just jotting down a few of the most basic definitions. Let's first define a sinusoidal voltage source. Sinusoidal voltage source is a source that produces a voltage that varies sinusoidally with time. This is a voltage that varies sinusoidally with time. And the other definition is a sinusoidal current source. Sinusoidal current. source. And this definition is exactly the same. Produces a current that varies sinusoidally with time. So, varies sinusoidally with time. So let's talk about what does that mean? What does it mean for something to vary sinusoidally? Let's write that question down. What is a sinusoid? Now, for the rest of this lecture, I'm going to use voltage to illustrate everything, but it's a one-to-one -one translation between voltage and current. So let's go ahead and put down um, an axis here. Let's say that we've got that. And on the horizontal axis, we have time. There is a time. And we'll do volts on top. And like I said, it could be the same thing for voltage or current. And a sinusoid, you've probably been seeing since your middle school math classes, is just this sort of wave function. And you'll forgive me my terrible uh, drawing there. But there you go. There's a sinusoid. Now, right off the bat, there are two important characteristics that we need to look at. The first one is the distance from zero to the very top of the peak. We're going to denote that as V sub M. Now, let's define it. V sub M, let's put in parentheses, or I sub M is the maximum amplitude maximum amplitude of the voltage or current So, and then the other one is the distance between, uh, let me use a different color, the difference, the distance between equivalent places. So when the signal reaches one point, how much time passes between then and when the signal reaches that point again? We'll denote that with a capital T. And this is probably a review for most of you, but let's go ahead and define it. Capital T is the period of the function. The period of the function and is given in seconds. Given in seconds. So from there, basically everything else derives from just this. We know the period 
and we know the maximum amplitude of that signal. And we don't very often refer to the period directly. Instead, we discuss that the time aspect of the signal as the frequency, which we usually denote as lowercase f. And it's defined as the reciprocal of the period. And that's given in cycles per second. Although normally we never say cycles per second, we usually refer to it with the unit capital H, lowercase z, or hertz. But that's cycles per second. And so now we're ready to have our first equation of the entire course here. We have that frequency is simply equal to, so reciprocal, 1 over the period, capital T. And that's given in hertz. So that's how we calculate the frequency, 1 over the period of the signal. Now, cycles per second is sometimes a little bit vague mathematically. So to replace frequency, what we're going to use is instead a thing called the, the angular frequency. And we'll use the Greek lowercase omega little w to denote that. And then we'll say that this is similar to frequency, but given in radians per second. Radians per second. Now the conversion, or excuse me, now to calculate that, we don't need to convert anything just yet, but to calculate radians per second, and that's just going to be 2 pi over the period t. And that's in rads per s. So there we go. That's how we calculate the angular frequency of our signal. We like that one just because it's a little bit more mathematically precise. Now from here, we have a really simple conversion. If we need to go between frequency and angular frequency, we need to do a conversion, one or the other, frequency to angular frequency. The equation we're going to use, you can kind of already see it here in that definition, but angular frequency, omega is equal to 2 pi times f. So there we go. That's how we convert between frequency and angular frequency. I guess we could also have written it, you know, f is equal to omega over 2 pi. Or, there we go. Now we're actually ready to dis to define officially our sinusoidal voltages and currents, right? We can't just draw it out every time. We need to sort of have a one-liner for it. So let's do that. We'll say sine sinusoidal voltage. And that's given as this. V is a function of time is equal to that maximum amplitude times Cosine. Now we could use sine or cosine to define sinusoidal voltage sources, but by convention we're going to use cosine to do that. And it's really kind of arbitrary why we pick that. So cosine of omega times t plus phi. And we'll talk about what phi is here in just a second. And of course that's given in volts. If we want to define a sinusoidal current, Well, just swap out the I, the V's for I's. So we'll say that our current I sub T 
is equal to the maximum amplitude, capital I sub M, times the cosine of omega T plus phi, and that's given in amps. But what is this phi component? Let's ask that question. What is phi? And phi is just the what we call the phase angle. Let's define that. The phase angle, given in the Greek lowercase phi. And phase angle used to freak me out when I was an undergraduate student, but all it does is it determines the value of the voltage or current source. at t equals zero. So it just gives us that initial value for our voltage or current. It's all that the phase angle does. Right, later we'll talk about how you shift it around and how that affects things. But for now, it's just the value of the source at t equals zero. Now, normally, phi is given in degrees. But that kind of leads to a problem, right? Inside that statement, we have omega t plus phi. Remember, omega is radians per second. t is just seconds. And phi is given in degrees. A little bit of algebraic simplification means that we have radians plus degrees. And we cannot add values that have different units. Right? The universe would implode if we were able to do that. So we need a quick way to convert between radians and degrees. One of them has to give either convert the radians to degrees or the degrees to radians. So if we need to convert between radians and degrees, the equation is pretty simple. Simply value in degrees is equal to 180 degrees over pi times the value in radians. So that's how we convert back and forth between radians and degrees. Now the final characteristic before we sort of put an end on this particular part of the lecture is a, char a characteristic that's used a lot to calculate power and we'll see that in later sections of the course, is what's called the RMS value. And RMS stands for the root, that's the R, of the mean, that's the M, of the square, that's the S, of the function. So if we were to calculate the VRMS, the root mean square value of the voltage, it's going to look like this. The square root, that's the root of the mean. Now calculating the mean of a continuous function is sort of awkward, but it's this. 1 over t times the integral from t naught to t naught plus t, so over one period with respect to t, so that's the mean of the function squared, the square of the function, so that's going to be v sub m squared times the cosine squared of omega t plus phi. Now if you solve that integral, which we won't do, and actually simplify this to a really, really simple function, and all we have is this, that v rms is simply equal to vm over the square root of 2. So there's our equation for calculating um, VRMS. And IRMS is exactly the same, right? We would say that not V, but I RMS is simply equal to I sub M over the square root of 2. 
So we'll use this a lot in later sections to make power calculations. So that is it for sinusoidal sources. Let's just do a quick little recap. We've got a sinusoidal function. So for voltage, that's VT is equal to the maximum amplitude times the cosine of the angular frequency, omega, given in radians per second, times T in seconds, plus the phase angle, which gives us our value at T equals zero. That's in volts. We'd have the same equation for amps. Remember that angular frequency is equal to two pi times the normal frequency. We also just write that as two pi over T. And finally there that the RMS value, V RMS is equal to V sub M over the square root of two. So there we have it. That's it for sinusoidal sources. We talked about what it means for a source to be sinusoidal. We talked about how to calculate some important characteristics such as frequency and angular frequency. We talked about um, phase angle, what that means. It's just the value of our source at t equals zero. And we also talked about how to calculate that RMS value, which is really important for power calculations. Now in the next couple of videos, we're gonna work some examples of sort of taking these uh, equations and these concepts, and we're gonna put them in practice, actually put some numbers behind them and work out some examples. So I look forward to seeing you guys in those next videos. Thank you.